Hey guys, just a reminder, this is not official medical advice or such. Please seek an appointment with a licensed medical provider. Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers coming to you with a weekly podcast of what I call the Common Sense MD. Today I'm going to talk about something that a lot of you may not have even heard about, but could be very interesting for some patients, and that's oxalates. I'll explain what that is in a minute, but um, you know, it's really interesting that you can eat a really, what you think is a really healthy diet, and you can actually be causing yourself illness, like spinach. That's kind of surprising, isn't it? Isn't it? Because it's a great healthy food, but for some people, no. Chocolate. Um, you know, we talk about dark chocolate, how many great antioxidants are in there, and it is. But for some people, they may not be able to tolerate it um, because of the gut um, and other reasons. But, yeah, for some people that eat spinach, almonds, soy, you know, soy is bad anyway. We've talked about that a lot. I don't like soy in this country. Um, potatoes, beets, some kinds of beans, raspberries, stevia, um, avocados, oranges, grapefruit, dates. And it's because of they're very high in oxalates. Um, again, these, these foods have many health benefits. I'm not cutting them down, but for some people, they're, doing, they're going against their health when they eat these things. So you have to kind of figure out if you can tolerate these or not. Um, you know, I just mentioned, except for soy, the benefits of a lot of these antioxidant foods and health foods. Um, but for some people, especially those who form kidney stones, um, they really need a low oxalate diet. Um, by the way, um, there's some similar health foods that are very low in oxalates, like kale, bok choy, cashews, peanuts, walnuts, pumpkin uh, seeds, sweet potatoes, broccoli, uh, kidney beans, blueberries, blackberries, dried figs. Um, but oxalates are also produced by your body. So it's the combination of what you may eat and your, your body's way of producing oxalates. So what is an oxalate? Um, really, it's a chemical compound, one of those things called an anion, which has a negative charge. You know, cations have a positive charge, anions have a negative charge. Um, it occurs naturally, it's colorless, um, it forms a variety of salts like sodium oxalates, which is what most kidney stones are made of. Again, if you pass a kidney stone, always get it an analyzed, and most of the time it's going to be sodium oxalate. For those people, they need to get on a low oxalate diet. Um, it's interesting because its precursor is ethylene glycol. Think antifreeze. Um, and propylene glycol um, comes from ethylene glycol. Propylene glycol, some people short term it PEG, polyethylene glycol, is used in laxatives like Miralax. Um, and that peg comes from petroleum. Interesting. So it's found in a lot of skin creams and food additives. It was also in the jab, and of course still is. Uh, that's why they were supposed to ask you if you're allergic to peg before giving you the jab. Um, they didn't always do that. And how are most people going to know they're allergic to peg? Uh, not many people are going to know they have that allergy. Well, in short, it's not good for you. Um, but I've digressed so much for the chemistry lesson. Um, so, who, so who should avoid oxalates? Certainly those with kidney stones. But also people with digestive disorders. Um, leaky gut, which we see every day in our office, makes oxalates a lot more toxic for you. Anybody with inflammatory bowel disease, um, it really, oxalates are probably bad for you. Anybody who's taking antibiotics, they increase your oxalate levels. It's not just that the antibiotics disrupt your gut microbiome, it also increases your oxalate levels, which are further bad for your gut microbiome. Um, remember, most diseases don't have symptoms until they're late stage. 
Um, so start thinking about this. So if you have an autoimmune disease or um, any kind of issue with autoimmunity, which we see every day in our clinic, we try to figure out the cause of it. Um, a lot of times it's leaky gut. Think about oxalates in your diet. Um, signs of high oxalates, cloudy urine, gritty eyes. A lot of times those are little oxalate stones in there. Um, if you have a post-COVID cough, that could be a problem with oxalates. Even anxiety and depression can be an oxalate problem. Peeling skin. If you can't figure out why your skin's peeling, think about oxalates. There's other stuff that can cause that too. And of course, kidney stones. If you have kidney stones, watch out for that. I think one in 10 uh, Americans will eventually have a kidney stone. The thing about oxalates is it's hard to test for it and it may not show up in the blood. Uh, sometimes you have to keep checking repeated urine samples to find it. Um, and a lot of people find that if they just go on a low oxalate diet, um, it helps mold and yeast problems that they may be having. Um, those symptoms may improve. Low thiamine, vitamin B1, very important, is common in these folks. Um, oxalates are chelators, meaning they bind to minerals. So they can cause a mineral deficiency. Um, and this can turn on your parathyroid, especially calcium. This can turn on your parathyroid glands, those glands that sit atop of your thyroid, four little glands, top and bottom, and they regulate your calcium metabolism. So if you have that problem, what happens is your parathyroids get turned on to produce more calcium because the oxalates are binding the calcium. So when your parathyroid goes into overdrive, it can cause too much calcium and you can get that calcium deposited in your arteries um, and also your joints. So, you know, look at your CT calcium scoring. That may be one cause of it. Um, so they can cause mineral loss. They can also cause acidity, inflammation, and metabolic damage. Um, so if you're counting these oxalates, you probably won't be. You want to consume less than 200 milligrams a day. Uh, so how do you get rid of oxalates if, if you happen to eat too many or overproduce them in your own body? Uh, one thing is drink more water. Two, steam or boil vegetables uh, that are high in oxalates. Um, get good calcium in your diet, not in calcium supplements. You know, I, I always tell people, especially women, not to take in that calcium supplements for osteopenia, you know, get it through your diet because when you put it in the supplement, um, it makes things worse. Um, avoid, you know, if you have a problem with oxalates, you may want to avoid too much vitamin C. I love vitamin C, um, but people with oxalate kidney stones may not do as well on vitamin C. Um, they can increase the risk of more stones. So, you know, you should probably in that case keep it under two grams a day. Uh, vitamin C has a lot of great properties, and certainly for short-term use for certain problems, it's, it's safe. But look at that oxalate problem. If you do have these kidney stones, watch out for vitamin C. Um, so I'm not saying in this don't eat spinach or almonds or all those foods uh, that I've mentioned, but if you have kidney stones, digestive problems, Weird things like gritty eyes, peeling skin, um, digest any kind of digestive problem, or maybe autoimmune issues. Think about trying out a low oxid oxalate diet and see how you feel. And I'm going to give you a list of healthy foods that are low in oxalates at the end of this uh, podcast. Look on the written form of this. So think about oxalates. It's just one other thing you have to think about if you're chronically ill, don't feel good, and have these things that I've mentioned like kidney stones, digestive problems, think about oxalates, educate yourself. And uh, I'm going to post a list of the healthy uh, foods that you can eat that are low in oxalates. So I hope this is helpful. I'll see you guys next week.